I was going to this really academic middle school and I didn't really like it at all and I wanted to do something different and something more with art and a little bit more laid back in terms of like, you know, pushing information into your brain. The last year I was in public school in third grade, I had a teacher named Mrs. Forrest and she was the typical public school teacher who, this is how you do things. If you do them in this timely manner, then you'll get you know a gold star on your paper. My parents basically told me that Miss Forrest wanted to put me on drugs um, to like calm me down because she said I had ADD. Um, and so I think from that parent-teacher conference to the end of my third grade year, they were just like, he can't, he can't do this anymore. Like, we're not going to put our kid on drugs. I discovered Waldorf education when my younger son, Derek, started struggling in public school. He was unhappy in first grade when he wasn't able to learn to read, as all first graders should in public school. He was labeled and put into special education classes. So uh, his whole self-esteem just spiraled down, and, and um, going to school was an unhappy situation for him. My Waldorf experience was probably one of the greatest things of my life so far. It definitely allowed me to be the kid that I am. I think without it, I would have been a totally different person. I don't think I would have loved like the arts and music as much as I do. I feel that without the Waldorf education, it I would have viewed the world in like a different way that would be a, I guess you could say a little bit more narrow-minded. Waldorf education came out of the desire to um, educate children with the whole and the whole human being and wanting to integrate all of the arts in everything that we do. Waldorf. If you had to sum it up in one word other than being different, um, I would say creativity is a big part of Waldorf education. I think that Waldorf is very different from a lot of different styles of education. Because it's so small, you it's like a family in your class and with the teachers also. They're, they're more than just teachers, they're you know, role models or they're supporters. Along with having the same class and the same group of kids every single year, you have the same teacher. And my teacher from third grade through eighth grade was Sandy Schneider. I think the Waldorf education of having the same class and the same teacher was exactly how everyone thinks about it after the fact. It was like creating this safety net of um, support behind you when you needed it. If I had to create my own education like system, I would definitely do same class, same teacher. You definitely get sick of some of the kids and your teacher at some points, but then like you get sick of your siblings sometimes, but you're always going to, you know, like be there for them and I think it's a real gift to be with the same group of students for 8 years because you really do get to know each other very, very well but also you get to see um, the gifts that each um, student brings to each other. And I know that that can be a challenge as well when you're working with um, a whole group of children and there are social issues, but what happens in a Waldorf school is you learn to work those out for the best and you grow to appreciate the good qualities that every child brings. Because you feel like they're so lenient at times and that you never like get anything accomplished by what you're doing or how you're going about learning something. But somehow when you leave, whether it be that day you left or after your Waldorf education, you, you leave with the knowledge that you thought you would never have learned and you think about learning totally different. Everything in the Waldorf education is mandatory, so you can't choose not to take music and you can't choose not to take math. You have to take everything because it's like that well-rounded um, combination that connects everything, that gives you the education that you need, I guess. Some of the classes that I 
that I'm always going to remember at Waldorf are the ones that you would not have <laughs> in a regular school. It develops all the different senses, you know, like music is hearing and, you know, eyesight with art and feeling you, you move and you experience like the soil and doing things, ha experiments hands on in science. It just like, it's a much more whole experience rather than just reading out of the book and answering questions. For PE, at least at like public schools, especially like in high school, you know, you run around a track. I remember in eighth, seventh and eighth grade, we would run, it was like between five and seven miles up at Rancho San Antonio. Um, but it comes down to, I guess, creativity again. You could go run wherever you wanted. You don't have to run around in a track in circles. Seems silly. The Walder philosophy you don't have grades because a student shouldn't have a set point that they reach and then they stop. Like, oh, I want to get an A+, plus. so you get the A+, plus and then you stop improving from there. They want you to just keep going to, you know, because there's no end. There is no perfection. There's no A+, plus in the real world. You can always do better, always. So, like, they want to encourage you to always, always improve rather than getting to an A+, plus and being like, oh, I'm done. I don't know why you don't get grades in Waldorf. Maybe it's because they value individuality and, like, creativity. And every person is going to draw and write differently that is creative in their own way. Um, we don't give grades anymore in our school. We're, do, we're using th something called a rubric, which it's um, uh, we set goals for a block and then we set uh, coursework for the block. So instead of just ending up with a letter grade for a block, say an A or a B, there are about 11 different categories um, in which you get feedback on how well things went for you, where they um, are doing very well, and where they need to spend more time in developing certain skills. It's much more specific. People like ask me from time to time, hey, you know, I heard at Waldorf they don't allow televisions and stuff. You like explain to them, well, yeah, they don't advise it, but it's not like a rule, you know? I think that not having technology to a certain point is good for like younger kids and not having to see movies. They start like doing th activities outside ra rather than staying inside and watching TV. The young child looks at the world as everything being one and part of them and bringing technology in at that level is really inappropriate. You want them to be able to, to create their own images out of the stories and um, the mythology that they're exposed to. But when you get into the middle school, we, it's appropriate to, to bring technology in at the right time. If I had to do it again, I think I would just rule out TVs. Because, um, I mean, it's like detoxing from like drugs almost. Like after you don't have technology for a good couple of days, you become like a different person that um, for most I think is like more joyous to like be around. I think that the classes at Waldorf have helped me learn and develop because like it's not necessarily about the information. Like if you ask me like information about so a specific scientist and when they were born, I would have no idea. But like the meaning that they have in the hist in like throughout history or like how their story like affected me or whatever is more prominent like that's what the teachers want more like how you can relate it to yourself and how you can relate it to your life i think a waldorf school student if you had to sum it up real quick thinks about learning and the world in general totally different from a public school student um, for me, once I got to high school, I wanted to actually learn the things that I was being taught instead of going through the motions. And I don't know if I would have thought that way if I didn't go to Waldorf. My younger son, Derek, when he applied for college, he had to write an essay um, about his educational experience. And he was 19 at the time, and he wrote in his essay how much he appreciated Waldorf education. Oh, it's kind of an emotional thing <laughs> um, because the teachers really saw him for who he was 
and he was allowed to express himself and he was allowed to develop um, all parts of who he is and particularly the artistic side of himself. And I think that's rare when you find a 19 year old able to look back on their education and appreciate so much of what they learned. It usually doesn't happen until later in life.